All right, so uh, the first activity that we're going to work on here is um, get to know a little bit what the um, what the thing that we're going to love and hate is, which are the search engines. We love them because the search engines give us the answers we want, but perhaps we hate them because why am I not number one? Right? So let's, uh, let's do an activity here where you open up your web browser, whichever one you like, and let's go over to google.com. We're going to do something that uh, is becoming more and more second nature, so much more that it's become a verb. Right? When someone wants uh, asks you a question, you don't know, you say, someone's ev eventually going to say, well, just Google it. Well, what is, uh, before it became a verb, what does that mean to Google it? Well, search for it. Search for it online. And right now, the biggest search engine is Google. Um, how many other search engines do you know of? Bing. Bing. Okay, good. Any others? Yahoo. Yahoo? Good. Firefox uh, has a search built-in feature to a degree, yes. Any other search engines? Mozilla and Firefox are related. Uh, so there's a plenty of others. AltaVista, anyone remember that one? What about Ask Jeeves? There's DuckDuckGo. There's a bunch of search engines out there. But the big one uh, by market share, I'll have to look up the exact numbers, but last month Google had the highest, uh, had the highest uh, search engine traffic. Uh, I believe it was in the range of about 60%. So 64% of all search traffic goes through Google. The uh, other, um, the other big search engine by volume is Bing. Bing.com. Take a quick look at Bing. If you haven't been to it before, Bing.com. It's a search engine. You type there, you search. Obviously, looks a little bit different than Google. Not so Spartan. Um, so there's Google. There's Bing. And there's other ones. Yahoo, which actually has a close relationship with Bing. And as I said, this is an up-and-coming search engine here called DuckDuckGo.com. How many of you heard of DuckDuckGo.com before? So they're all search engines. They're all trying to uh, give you the best results from when you type your query. Right? You search for a particular concept or a keyword or a company and such. Sorry, we are totally so we'll try again next uh, Monday and see if we can get some. What share market does Yahoo have? Yahoo now has a much lower market share because also they get their results from Bing. Now, Bing has about, I think, 15 to 18 percent market share or so, and then their results anyway, they give them to Yahoo. So um, you can kind of think of Yahoo and Bing as, as the same, and they get around. 17, 18 percent together. So then there's the other search engines. I think the statistic even said the fourth highest one at the moment is uh, AOL, if you can believe that. Yeah, so some of them are still around. So uh, Google and Bing are actually the two big search engines that we're going to be targeting. Uh, we're going to learn the tips and techniques, the do's and don'ts of Google and Bing, because combined together they have the largest market share. Now you may say, well, everyone knows about Google, my, my grandmother knows about Google, everyone knows about Google, why are we bothering with anything else? Yes, they have the largest market share, but also think about would you exclude a potentially large market share just because they weren't the largest market share? It wouldn't make sense on a regular business that say, I'm only going to sell my pizza to this demographic of people. I also want to get possibly more demographics. So we'll be talking about Bing as well. Here's an, uh, an anecdote. Uh, my friend, uh, she has a, a Prius. So we were driving around the other day, and uh, she's got a cool little uh, digital control panel right in the center, and it's got maps and all of that. And it's got a search feature built in. So when I went to search, it actually popped up with Bing search. So some models of Priuses, Prius I, whatever the plural is, uh, have Bing search built in. So whereas perhaps many times Google is the built-in default search engine, you're going to see more and more Bing as a default search engine. For example, iOS 8 and the latest version of Mac OS 10 uh, Yosemite, uh, being an, some important stuff is being announced tomorrow, uh, they're going to start to default 
to Bing. They had a cozy relationship with Google since 2007. Not so cozy anymore. So it's going over to Bing. So people on your iPhone, especially new people, are going to have Bing search as the default. So it behooves us to get in on the ground floor. If you've never given it a second thought, there's going to be a sea change. We want to learn what Bing has to offer, pros and cons of it, and how to optimize for it, as well as, of course, Google. Think about this as well. Uh, how many of you have a, uh, a Windows computer at home? How many of you have bought one in the last, a Windows computer in the last two years? How many of you are planning on buying one within the next year? Well, Windows is currently at Windows 8, 8.1, and it comes with Bing Search built in as well as the default. People can change it, they can go back to Google if they want, but how many of you change the default if it works? Think about the variety of people that think like that. Well, I search, I, I don't know, I just want to find my the restaurant. And they're searching on Bing by default because their Windows 8 computer came with Windows 8 with Bing. So that's another reason why we'll also be targeting Bing. And many of the things that we talk about in Bing and Google go back and forth, just maybe on a different screen, a different window. But it's not going to be really double the work. So let's go to, let's go back to Google, and let's try this. On this Google search, go ahead and search for your name. Search for yourself the way you are most commonly known. So if you're William Jefferson Clinton, perhaps search for Bill Clinton, right? Search for the name, your name, that you are most known for. Whatever you're most known for. If you're, if you're like Cher and you only go by one name, then go ahead. But uh, search your name, most commonly known. So you're going to do a Google search here for yourself. Do any of the results that appear on this first page, are any of them you? For sure, for certain. So as you look here, on this, our, our screens may look a little different, but do any of you also see images of yourself, so to speak? All right, so if you look here, uh, I'm looking, what do I see? So I see the actor that was in Scarface. That's not me. I see my LinkedIn profile. That's me. I see my brand yourself profile. That's me. Uh, I see my uh, in my professor ratings for Southwestern College, that's me. And then other results that are not me, lawyers and actors and such. So out of the first top 10 results, I see myself actually in one, two, three, four. Four out of 10 results. All right, let's try the same thing. But now, go to a different web browser. So right now I'm in Chrome. doesn't matter which one you are, but whatever web browser you open now, go to a different web browser. And this time, let's go to bing.com and do the exact same search. So I'm going to open Internet Explorer. Let's go to bing.com. And the same way that you searched in Google, do that search as well. Now, out of this uh, page of results, how many of you saw uh, at least one of the same results on both? All right. Did you find any results on Bing that were not in Google? Right, so we're seeing both of them are search engines, both of them are browsing the same internet, the same World Wide Web, but they're both trying to give you what they believe is the best results. Um, the search engine, you can think about it, it gives you a, a product. It's in business for something, and it's going to give you a product. Uh, its product is, is a page of search results, so each one feels it has the better formula for search results, sort of like 
Coke and Pepsi. Each one is a type of a sweetened cola, carbonated beverage, but each one thinks that its formula is better. The formula for the search engine is known as the algorithm. So while we will not be able to know exactly how the algorithm works for either search engine, we will be able to read documentation, uh, tips and tricks, uh, hands-on um, experience about how to successfully live with the algorithm. Because uh, basically the search engines, especially Google, since it's the largest one, we're playing in their playground, and they make the rules. And when they change the rules, when they change the algorithm, then the game changes, and either we give up and go home or keep playing with the new rules. As a matter of fact, Google just changed a few rules very recently, within the last 30 days, which we'll talk about. These things change on a somewhat regular basis, and then this class has to change also, because the techniques that I teach here try to be the most modern and current and relevant techniques than what I taught it a year ago, because things change. So on my Bing results here, some things that I see different, for example, are, hey, that's me right there. I see my picture right away from the other Victor campuses, campus I. Um, notice, uh, perhaps looking at a headshot uh, gives someone a little bit more trust about clicking the link instead of another page of anonymous blue links. We'll talk about how do we how do we accomplish some of these tricks that or techniques that each search engine has uh, to stand out from the rest. Notice this search engine gives these other victors but then it also says you might need Victor Campos in San Diego. Right there at the top. So uh, Google is telling me, in my case, that there are 1.6 million results. I can see that at the top here. And Bing tells me there are 3.8 million results. And again, uh, how many of you are going to go that much deeper into the results unless you really are looking for something? Uh, that number statistics show is going lower. That is, uh, people that are going into lo later pages, uh, it, it's less people. They want the result right away because we're getting used to it. We're getting, we're getting used to that the first page of results is the best. Let's go back to uh, Google. Let's do another search here. If you have a company... Let me back up a moment. Uh, so this class I'm going to focus a lot on the terms, uh, mostly about talking about companies. But you can take this class if you don't have a company, if you have a nonprofit organization, if you have a youth group, if you have a band, if you are going to sell your paintings. Whatever you are trying to get found on the search engine results, you can think about that as your company. So when I say, uh, let's do some research on your company, Remember, I'm just talking about what is the thing that you want to get found by a search. So here, we'll do another Google search for your company. Search for your company name as it should be written. Uh, for, for example, my company, as I said, mine is PMD Interactive. That's how I'm going to search for it. I'm not going to search for pmdinteractive.com. I'm going to search for it as a normal word. You try that for your own company. If you don't have a company, um, try searching any other company, my company, whatever. But search for your company as a normal word. So here I search for my company on Google search. 417,000 results. Our website's homepage is number one. That's great. We're at the very top of Google search. There's a Yelp result, a Twitter result, Facebook. There's a YouTube video about one of our apps, Google+, Pinterest, LinkedIn. And then it gets to two that are not us. We are not listed on the NASDAQ yet. This is some other company. 
So um, eight out of the ten results are our company. Okay, let's look at the same search with Bing. Switch over to the Bing search engine. I'll search the same way. This Bing search says I have 173,000 results. Again, comparing that with 417,000 to Google. 173,000 results. There's our home page, number one. There's our Facebook, number two. There's our Twitter. Look at this. This is a deep link on our site. This is a link that is one level deeper into the site, whereas there is no result in my case like that on Google. It's just the top level, pmdinteractive.com. On Bing, it analyzed my site a little bit more and based on various signals said it might be useful to show people their portfolio. If you're looking for a web designer, social media marketers, etc., you might want to see what their portfolio of clients was before I hire them. That's something that I'm not seeing in Google. Question? So as far as results go, I mean, the results, what is that? The results of what? Like, my business is Wind and Tea Tree Service. So is uh, service, tree, and Wind and Tea, are those all in all those results? Is one of those words is in those results, or what? Because there can't, be, can't be 50 million results of Wind and Tea Tree Service. Yeah, it de it depends. Uh, your particular name seems to your know, co your company name seems to have these common terms. That's why you've got so many results. Whereas mine has less common terms, so less results. So the search engines by default are going to try to find results based on the keywords that you put in. It breaks up every word and analyzes it and gives you results, which might not be what you what you want because you're getting so many results you're not being found within the crowd. So we'll be, ta we'll be talking about dealing with that, uh, how the search engine thinks and how to take advantage of that and how to appear um, higher up, especially if you've got a common name, common terms. Yes? So if I put my company name in and it shows 92 thousand results, what does that mean exactly? It means that there's that many listings of it. So in my case, I've got 173,000 results. And notice, there's our home page, there's our Facebook, there's our Twitter, there's our portfolio page, there's our Yelp, there's um, our Google Plus. So every result, every web page, every every web page that it finds, it puts it in the results. So it may not be just what my website has. Maybe I've got 100 pages on my website. But it's also finding pages on Twitter and Facebook and Yelp and LinkedIn. So these are all results. These are not how many people are searching. These are the results of it if it finds actual pages on the Internet. The past that parameter could be correct. Yes, that it has these terms that I searched for. So is there any bearing on... Optimization on the amount of results you get is it better to have more results or less results or it doesn't matter? Well, it's a little bit better to have less results because then you are not a needle in a haystack. Mm -hmm. But if you if I was, for example, if my company was uh, San Diego San Diego web designers.com, well, that is such a common term that it's gonna have a million results. Mm -hmm and I may get lost in the crowd, or if I try really hard, I might be number one. It is sort of a, it's sort of a catch-22. If I'm trying to break into the web with commonly used words, I'm going to have a hard time. But if I've got commonly used words, I might get found easier. See the catch-22. So we'll talk in detail about that and, and how to deal with it. Up first, then that's pretty good, right? Yes, but we are doing this is sort of a trick question at the moment. 
I'm searching for my company name, you're searching for your company name, and I came out on number one. Great, that must mean that people are going to find me. Well, wouldn't they be searching actually for more like uh, web designers in San Diego right. or affordable social media marketers? Right. They wouldn't be searching my company name if they knew my company. Now, there's a lot of people also that uh, don't know the difference between uh, typing an address on the address bar and searching the address in a search engine. So there is a lot of people that, without thinking, they wrote the address in the search. And that's a weird kind of gray area that the search engines have to deal with. But uh, a, a person would uh, more, you would assume that a person uses a search engine to find a concept, not a company. So I'm number one here, but this is an artificial search, just to prove a point. Well, in the beginning, there there was a huge difference here. In the beginning, if you try, if you typed an address, this is the address bar, and this assumes you're going to type a web address. In the beginning, if you didn't type. If you didn't type the web address exactly, you would get that 404 error page not found. Because the search engine, uh, the web browser assumed you were putting in an address. After 25 years of having the web, these web browsers now are more lenient and they let you search at the same time. So right here, notice I didn't type my address correctly. I have a space right there. That's not a web address. So the, the, the web browser thinks it's a search term, so it'll give me search results. So when you search in a search engine, it's going to be searching all the possibilities of what you've searched for. But when you type an address up here, it should go to the website, unless you type the wrong address, and then it'll search anyway. All right, so um, we'll do one more search. Uh, you, you search for your name, you search for your company. Now, we'll go back to Google. Now, let's search for what your company is about. So, I'm a social media company. So, I'm going to go back to Google and search social media companies. Again, these search engines are getting smarter. As you're typing, you might get predictions. Do you mean this? Ignore those for the moment. I'm typing social media companies and, and it says, do you maybe mean San Diego, maybe this, maybe New York City? Ignore that for the moment. We'll be back to it. Just type the general name of what your company is about or it sells or what your nonprofit is about or your youth group, etc. Just general terms. Don't even be specific about the state or the city and such. Just a general search term. Social media companies in my case. So what I've got here, the number one result here, social media firm SD, top social media marketing, SVCS, Parallel6.com. Wow, I should click on them because they are the number one result. That means they're the best, right? That would make sense a few years ago, but actually that's an ad. That's an advertising, advertisement. The company paid for that top result. So they're at the top. And now these are clearly delineated with ad. Just a few years ago, they were not. They were kind of a little hard to tell what's an ad and what's a real result. Now they're clearly marked as ads. On the top here, on the right side here also, social media, spreadfast.com. They're at the top here. That doesn't necessarily mean they're the best result. They just paid for that placement. It's like buying an ad uh, on the Super Bowl. They might not be the best, whatever they sell, but they have the exposure. Okay, so everyone in this room wants to be found on the first page. Mm -hmm. There's only so many companies that can be found on the first page. There's only how many spots? Ten. Ten. Mm -hmm. That's what we're going to talk about. Those are, the de those are the nuances and the details about dealing with that because we are fighting for a finite amount of 
amount of space. And through the activities that we're going to do, we're going to talk about how we can get ourselves into those spaces. So these top results, in my case, are ads. Then, past the ads, the world's top 10 most innovative companies in social media. February 13, 2014, social media, what most companies don't know, from Harvard Business Review. Your social media company, dot com. Uh, MySMMN dot com. So then I get to real results, non-paid results, organic results. There's paid results, and there's organic results. Organic means that it was not artificially paid for for placement. They didn't pay for it. But the top result is an article about innovative companies in social media, not an actual company. And this has been a trend that's been happening more with the search engines. Because, as I said a moment ago, the web, the World Wide Web, this year celebrates 25 years of existence. The internet is older, though. It's from the 60s. The, the internet and the web are actually technically different things. But what we're looking at here is the web, websites, and they're 25 years old. And in those 25 years, things have evolved pretty rapidly. Search engines, for example. One of the earliest ones was Yahoo. Two college students started the search engine in their dorm to um, catalog all of these hundreds of websites that were out there. Now, um, years later, uh, Google, Bing, etc. are still doing it. But now there's billions of websites, probably, and um, much more of a challenge to organize them. Because when I search for this very generic term, I've got 93.5 million results in 0 0.37 seconds. So techniques were developed. The so search engines created algorithms to display the most relevant results. And those algorithms are basically trade secrets for each company, like the formula to Coca-Cola. Um, trade secrets that each company holds on to, but that applies to every website it finds and then serves up. So that algorithm, those techniques, have to change every once in a while. One of the earliest techniques to rank well on search engine results was to use keywords, uh, keywords in your meta tags. So uh, I would go into Dreamweaver, open a site, go to the meta tags, and type in the, these keywords, what my site is about, social media, comma, San Diego, comma, uh, affordable, comma. I would put in these keywords um, that would define what my site was about. And that worked for a while, because not many people were doing it. The people that were doing it had the, the, the heads up. They were able to get ahead of everyone else. They got higher placement. Then people discovered, OK, uh, I'm going to put all of these keywords and 20 more that kind of relate. And then they would kind of be gaming the system. And then people find out, I'm going to put in the whole dictionary into my keywords. I've got to get hits that way. And it worked for a little while. Then the search engine said, keywords are no longer the best way to organize a site. We're not going to pay attention to keywords. Now we're going to pay attention to this. So suddenly the rules of the playground were changed. People got upset, especially those that were doing it legitimately. But the spammers were even more upset. Then other techniques came out. And then those techniques were abused. And new techniques came out. So this is why SEO is a moving target. That's why what I teach you today will probably work for a while. I don't know how long, six months, 12 months, I don't know. And then the search engines change it, and you have to take the class again. Or learn it on your own. Question? Back here. How do you recognize uh, There are many blogs out here that keep track of this stuff, and I'll be talking about them. These are, these are blogs that live and breathe SEO, and they can find out these answers by, for example, testing, like scientists, testing a hypothesis and reach conclusions. They would make a website, 10 websites, and do something on these five, and do something else on those five. 
and they'll see how the results vary. So through testing, because again, proprietary information, trade secrets. Google doesn't want everyone to know how their algorithm changes because everyone will abuse it. Or Bing will see how they do it and borrow it and make it better, vice versa. So uh, we'll talk about blogs that, that you should follow about SEO. And uh, you don't know until someone kind of f figures it out. Or there's an announcement. The search engines them themselves also tell you this is going to change. And we'll be looking at that as well. So it doesn't really just uh, do what, 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 what at a time. You had a question here? Um, I was just wondering, you mentioned they, the search engines look for the most relevant results. Mm -hmm. And then that first one I was up there was an article. And so the first thing that comes to my mind is so if you're out there writing articles, mm -hmm. is it pulling it by? Like most relevant, meaning the most recent date something was published around that topic, and is that something that you see? That's a great question. This is going to see, we're going to see the difference then between SEO and SEM. This is a little bit more of SEM, search engine marketing, which is uh, what is the content that you're putting out to the web, to the world. And in this result, because it's such a generic term, social media companies, it gave me an article here to inform myself to make a more informed uh, decision. So we'll look at um, what do we need to do on our site to follow the rules, SEO. What do we need to do on top of that, outside of the site, SEM, to, uh, to have more possibility of ranking? So the top ranks, they're not necessarily uh, who has the most presence on the web or who the most popular are? That's not really the criteria? There's a big mix. Um, it's sort of yes and no. There's a, We'll be talking about uh, various pillars that hold up our SEO ranking. And um, they, uh, they include popularity, and also content and other things that we'll get to in detail. The short answer is that it's all relevant, but to different degrees. Uh, keywords, for example, used to be 90% relative. Maybe now they're like 10% or, or, or even less. So um, we'll, we'll see what's still relevant, what's, what's on the horizon, what's no longer relevant, what used to be relevant and now hurts you, perhaps. So just to kind of answer it here, um, Fast Company is one of these websites that I would recommend to, to read on a regular basis regarding companies, uh, entrepreneurship, social media, SEO, and such. So it stands to reason because they've got a large readership, they've got activity on social media, on their website. Uh, popularity breeds popularity, which gives you higher search engine results. That's one factor in the algorithm. And that's why, even though this article is ancient, February 2014, uh, it's still at the top. Question? So do authority sites carry more weight than backlinks? Authority sites uh, do, are very important, especially if you can get backlinks from them. And part of the reason you become an authority site is because you have backlinks. So that's sort of, again, another catch-22. We want websites, and we'll see this in detail, we want websites to link to my website, and we'll talk about strategies. So I want XYZ website to, to link to my website, but I want quality XYZ company to link to my website. Uh, for example, Fast Company is a quality website, and if Fast Company links to your website, you'll probably see a spike in traffic, because people say that's an authoritative website, they link to your website, so you must be authoritative, I'll go to your website. Um, let's see then also, oh, this is new also, uh, I'm, I'm scrolling down. Again, these search engines are changing all the time. Uh, you may or may not see this, but I've scrolled down to the end of the results, and what happens is now I've got here in-depth articles from Forbes. How to use social media to promote your small business. Everyone probably has heard of Forbes. This article is from 2011. And then we've got 10 must-haves for your social media policy from 2009. Mashable, that's another big one. Make a note of mashable.com. You want to look at that website to keep track of what's happening in technology, social media, SEO. 
So this is new. They didn't have this a few months ago, maybe even a few weeks ago. They didn't have this in-depth article snippets thing. I want to get there. I want to be on the first page of results as an in-depth article. This sort of feels like Google is saying, this is one of the best results that we can give you. Check it out. I want to get there. We'll be talking about how we can possibly get into these um, like hero roles. Let's do the same search, the same keywords, over on Bing. So, same keywords, two different search engines. Let's check out their results. So in this result page, this SERP search engine results page, I get very similar things. I get an area that's pretty clearly delineated that these are ads. The number one result here is social media marketing from 180fusion.com. Guaranteed results. Call today. Number one at the top. And notice they're different from right here, parallel6.com. So skip that keep going. My first organic result, seven social media companies that kick ass by Jason Keith. JasonKeith.com and then an article. And then a bunch of deep links. This website here has gotten its own like mini search engine result. It says here is um, the about page for Jason Keith. Uh, here is his speaking engagements, I guess. Next result. Award-winning social media company in San Diego from uh, IgniteVisibility.com. This one is more, it appears to be more of a directory, where this is a list of award-winning social media companies. So not a website, but a link, of a page of links to websites. Rankings and reviews of best social media marketing companies. So again, another sort of a listing website, a directory website. And then a real result, um, a real company, IgniteVisibility.com itself. Here's another article, MoGreenMedia.com, a, a real company on its own. So notice nowadays the search engine results are not really anymore just the actual home pages of these companies. In it, it's mixed in a lot of other content, such as articles, also known as blogs, blog posts. We'll be talking about the importance of blogging in SEO. We get, we might get, did any of you see examples, results, for example, in Yelp? Yelp results, LinkedIn results, results on TripAdvisor, etc. You're seeing more results in these um, in these third-party sites that rank, for example, if I was look if I was looking for uh, Italian food, if I simply search Italian food, I'll probably get a bunch of Yelp results, and I go to that Yelp result, and that'll give me the top ten Italian food restaurants based on star rankings in Hillcrest. So we're seeing more of that. I want to get to be the number one Italian food restaurant on Yelp in Hillcrest so that I can then get the number one results on Bing search. So see, now it's, it's more aspects, more facets, more effort. And that's why social media, it's not hard most of the time. There's a lot of detail. It's complicated. Um, it's a moving target. Question. Uh, whenever I type my name, it's just as tree space. It came up as local results for tree service, and that has a little map, map and stuff. How come? Because it has service on the end. Is that why it came up with the um, why it went local results? I think you don't have local results. On that, are you on uh, on Bing or Google? Bing. Um, again, each search engine is trying to give you the best results. So, the search engines and the web browsers are smarter nowadays. Uh, so it probably picked up about some clue somewhere that you're probably in a location where it would make sense to cut down a tree. 
rather than to build a website. So it's giving you these local results. Uh, so some of these results may be triggered depending on the type of search that is accomplished and regular people often are not going to be thinking like a search engine marketer about okay I better search this way and make sure I use the word local you know people are just gonna search the way they search so we have to deal with those different possibilities the Bing results has related searches of course and here's something different over on the side you may or may not see a little sidebar that has a Twitter tweet from Jerry Mor Jerry Moran how to use social media to drive traffic for B2B, that's business to business companies. And that's over from kissmetrics.com. That's another good search engine uh, company blog to read, kissmetrics.com. So a, uh, a popular authoritative website has their tweet featured on the first page of results from a very generic search term, and it's a link to a blog post Um, by a person on Twitter with 70,000 followers. So we're going to see the concept of authority over and over. It's in my notes here somewhere for you, but authority is one of the important things that we want to address when trying to optimize for search engines. Are you the best authority on something? Um, are you, if you're a painter, are you uh, authoritative in the sense that are you known? Are you popular? Are you referenced in other websites? Uh, if I'm a, um, if I'm an actor and I'm trying to put my portfolio out there so that people can hire me for a job, well, what have I done? Uh, have I been on any TV shows? Is, am I getting authority? Am I building authority? We'll talk about how we can do that. So there's authority. And then there's two other pillars that I'll talk about, but keep in mind authority for the moment. So I'll give you one more thought, then we'll take a break. Uh, search engine optimization can either be uh, done the easy way or the hard way. How many of you want to do it the easy way? Okay, take out your credit card, and what we'll do is we will pay for a first result. That's the easy way. You're going to pay for the first result, and then you uh, basically you, the, uh, you, you, pull, you put a pool of money, let's say $20, and then you set up a campaign where your result will appear at number one. And then every time someone clicks on that result, it takes a little bit of money away from that pool. How much? Depends on the search terms you used. Some search terms are worth five cents per click. Some are worth one dollar per click. The ones that are worth the most are the most common ones, the ones that everyone wants. So if I put $20, um, a $20 pool, and I choose a keyword that is one dollar per click, I'm only going to get 20 clicks to my website. If I go for a search term that is five cents per click, let's see, five, uh, 20 nickels in a dollar, math, right? I'm not good at it, but you're going to get 100, 100 results, 100 possible clicks. So that's the easy way to get clicks to your website, to get found on the search engine results. You can pay for it. Question? Is there a way to find out how much money that is, like the engineer? Mm -hmm. Yeah, when we get into this, the webmaster tools, we can go into a screen that it'll tell us exactly how much each one is worth. The hard way is what I'm going to be teaching in this class. It's the way that will be free, uh, takes more effort, and is more long-term. Because as soon as your $20 is up, you may or may not appear on the first result anymore. Until you pay $20 again and again, and again, and again. Then your competitor pays $21, and now you're number two. And then their competitor pays $30, and now you're number eight. So, uh, if you are thinking of doing search engine optimization on your own, we're going to get a lot of hands-on experience, maybe more than you actually would think 
that you want to do. I'm running my business and I've got to do this too. Well, you can hire a company to do it. But hopefully, if you take this class, you will at least see when you hire a company, do they know what they're talking about? Are they using techniques that are three years old that don't help me anymore and might even hurt me? Question. Um, yes, if you are, uh, it's that's the catch twenty two again. If the cert, if the pay per click campaigns are giving you high results, but then you're also getting a residual snowball effect from not paying, that's going to affect your organic results as well. It could. None of this is guaranteed, unfortunately, except the part about paying. Uh, because the search engines change this stuff, and I, and I have to be cynical that sometimes I feel, well, we're going to pay this amount of money, I'm going to get great results, but then as soon as I stop paying, the results might not be so great. And that's what people come, when they take this class, sometimes tell me. They tell me, I, I hired the, the social media, uh, this uh, SEO company, and I got great results for a few months, and then now I'm on page 12. What, what, what do I do? What they might have done is, you paid them to do their magic, and what they did was create pay-per-click campaigns. And they got you on the top results, and then the money ran out, and so did your position. So we'll be talking about more long-term strategies that should work uh, without paying, but they will, they will take more effort the hard way. It's not so hard like, uh, like, like a hard job, like math and all of that, but it will, be, it will take time and effort. And if you're already running your business, then it might behoove you to research getting a, a company that does it. But at least you'll have the knowledge, the keywords, the, the, the jargon to know if they know what they're talking about. And general questions so far. All right, let's take a let's take a ten minute break. It's one forty five. We'll come back at one fifty five. When we come back, we'll have do some more hands on stuff. Make sure you uh, printed your name on the pink sheet that you were here on time, and that you used the add code. If you're not sure if you added the class, check with me because you need to be enrolled. Remember, I have to turn away like a dozen people. Make sure you're properly enrolled. You can, uh, is it here? And to the right, and when you get to the open courtyard, look to the left. And then it's here. Yes, this